This is the Director's Podcast with Jeff T. Thomas, Part 2. Can you tell me how your process from taking a project from script to screen is different today than it was when you made Full Circle? For me, uh, everything is different than Full Circle, right? Um, if you, it, it really comes down to the level of production. I think there's very different ways that an indie film, especially one shot for under twenty thousand um, dollars, going from script to screen is versus a well-oiled machine uh, show, TV show, where each episode has at least a million to two million dollars behind it. Um, it's a lot smoother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just you have you have you know way more crew, way more professional uh, you know people that do this for a living. There's a person assigned to every part of the filmmaking process. You have somebody who just does you know the uh, the production design, who just does you know the wardrobe, who just does the makeup, who just does the stunts, who just does every little thing. You have that. You have a, a person, and, and that's their life. So they're good at it for the most part mm -hmm. um, so they help you take that what's on the page and bring it to the screen of uh, very you know cohesively um, and when you're on an indie project especially with a film that's under 20,000 or even whatever I know that's an anomaly so let's say any indie film you know whatever under 200,000 you might not have all of those people and uh, and if you do they might not be as first as uh, the ones on the bigger production. So inevitably it's gonna be a lot harder to bring it, uh, your vision as a director from um, script to screen. So either you as a director have to step out of your element and wear other hats to make sure that it, that your what you see on the script goes to screen, and that's not easy, right? That's not, a lot, a lot of directors don't wanna do that. Um, but it all depends, right, on how, how bad you want it to be done. And, you know, I think that's where, you know, your tenacity is tested. But um, all that to say is, you know, uh, it's, it's just a lot more uh, excruciating uh, as a director uh, to bring your script to screen on an indie low-budget project versus a well-oiled you know, TV production. So when you jump into that well old TV production, say, you know, maybe not Snowfall, but say, tell me a story where we know each other yeah. from. So the, yeah. the moment you get the script, just talk me through that. Do you have like a, a, a moment where you're just familiarizing yourself? Do you imagine it? Do you storyboard? Do you write shots? What, 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 what's your process okay. there? So my process from reading a script, uh, usually I'll read it once and I'll have all types of ideas and I'll just start jotting notes down, you know, on, on my uh, notepad app. I'll just take whatever page I'm, if I get an idea on page five and I'll write page five or I want this, I, I see this. I see an ECU here um, to help intensify the emotion of this scene. You know, I feel like this will work out. Uh, th these two shots will work really well to um, express, you know, what this scene conveys. I'll, I'll jot that down. Um, I'll, then I'll, then something might not work for me, right? Something might not make sense for me. So I'll have questions, right? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll make sure my questions are addressed because if it doesn't work for me, most likely there's there's gonna be a bunch of audience members that are gonna feel the same way. Yeah. And uh, it's and it's my episode and I want it to make sense. And I want to, the characters to make sense and their choices to make sense and uh, the pacing to make sense and, you know, are we going from, you know, this intense, you know, emotional uh, scene between two of our main characters to like, you know, all of a sudden I'm inside of a car and the guy's delivering food, you know, like, uh, you know, where's the breath in between that? Little stuff like that I, I'll, I'll think about and make sure that the pacing is there and things run smoothly and everything seems to make sense. That's the kind of first round I'll go into uh, reading it first um, and then I can bring up those questions in concept meeting or whatever I can bring up those questions up anytime honestly as a director you can ask whatever you want to ask whenever you want to pretty much which is great um, and everybody will be more than 
willing to answer your question because you're the director and they want the best episode from you. So they're gonna give you all the tools and information you need to make that happen. So that's the first time. Then um, once I get all those ans- those questions answered and have those like preliminary notes down, uh, then I'll start. Uh, then then you know then we'll start looking at locations and we'll start like start like um, you know meeting the actors and stuff like that and then that'll give you a better idea as well visually and then you can go back into the script as many times as you want and then just really start um, scrutinizing it and being way more detailed and fastidious with it and then you know you, you, till, till we read it as many times as you need to I read it as many times as I need to until I feel very comfortable with everything uh, that, that where to the point where I'm like all right I have a plan. I have a plan for each scene, and um, there's nothing else I can do on this page. Mm-hmm. There's things that are going to change and adapt on set, and that I can't plan for. So I'm, you know, I, 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 I that's how I'm stress-free at that point mm-hmm. because I know that I did my job up to this point, and anything else I can do can only be done on set. So I'm not going to stress. Mm-hmm. And, and then that's, you know, then we go on set and we, and we shoot and things might change, but that's all on the, on the day. That's all kind of figuring it out. Do you, do you storyboard or shot list or do you like to, um, you know, run with it? Like what's the... For me, I, I only storyboard um, action right. for the most part, uh, only because we are, action will take longer to shoot and there's more shots to, uh, to, to get and uh, there, there, there's a lot of motion and a lot of you know there, there's a lot going on there so I want to make sure that so I'm storyboarded so I'm very well prepared and the crew and cast is also very well aware of the plan and it's it's visually out mapped out for them yeah. and that always helps things run a lot smoother and makes things run on more on time you know cuts down time so so yeah i'll never forget there was an episode of power i did where it was a big action sequence and we had to shoot another scene after that and um it was it was it was the scariest day on the schedule uh because it looked like we were gonna go um, like two hours over schedule, like that's what it was coming out to. So we really storyboarded um, the, the action sequence as much as it, we just really went in on it. Did a previs, storyboarded it, mapped it all out, came on set, put the whole storyboard up on this big board outside, and we fucking knocked it out like in a couple hours. Right. And we ended up ending earlier than a 12 hour day right. so it was scheduled to be a 15 hour day and we actually ended before 12 hours and that's when I, that was a big um, that was a big moment for me kind of a, an epiphany where I was like wow that's that's the reward of really storyboarding and really meticulously planning yeah. a scene yeah. you'll, you'll, you really you really reap the reward and you have a very happy crew and a very happy cast and you know and you're the hero yeah, yeah. you know because you everybody was ready yeah. for this excruciating day and now all of a sudden you gave them this vacation you know <laughs> out of nowhere so it's like everybody's oh you know so it's, it's mainly when days are just like almost impossible to do or you have so many variants you know variable things you have to control those are the moments that because I know on like an eight day schedule it's quite, it's hard to storyboard everything you know and you don't often need to I don't feel like I need to but when there's a conversation between two people in a room you know you don't necessarily yeah. need to you know storyboard that which a lot of people yeah. may not understand you know especially people starting off in the business but um yeah. It's uh, something I tried to do when I did my first episode of television <laughs> and realized you just can't do it. There's not enough time to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, not, it's not worth it. And you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised because looking at all your work, you know, like you said, you were on the, the drama side of the, the program that you were on. Your work is... And yeah, we did Tell Me a Story, oh, did, which is a horror. Which is a horror. You know what I mean? Which is thriller. But your work yeah. is... The work that you produce yourself, that you write yourself, is so funny. It's it's it's, it's really, you. really fun. Like, I mean, just that episode I watched last night... Um, where your girlfriend calls you Bruno when the two of you are having sex. I mean, they just have me in right. stitches, you know. And this is, that's just one of them. There's, just, there's so many great moments. But you do drama so well. So where is your comfort zone? What would you like to explore more next? In between. In between, you know, right. it's, the, it's It's the in between. So I have a bunch of scripts that I wrote that, you know, 
to trying to get made, you know, movies yeah. trying to get made. I think that's important for people to know. It's like even the people you think are have made it are still can't get movies made. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like still to get a movie made is is a, is, is 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 fucking arduous, and it's like it's damn near impossible. And when it does happen, it's amazing. And um and you and everybody always has that same feeling. It's like oh, you saw some bullshit movie, and if that movie got made, oh, they should definitely make my movie because it's way better than that bullshit movie. But what you don't know is the semantics that went behind that bullshit movie movie yeah. and, and and you know the connections and how that bullshit movie got made is its own story onto itself and um, just because some bullshit movie gets made doesn't mean your amazing film will and um, and I mean that's the the hard truth uh, so yeah but I have all my, my scripts are live in that in between that space right. so they're usually like you know dramatic um, events or a character is thrown in, in a you know, in excruciating circumstances and has to get his his, his or her way out of it, uh, you know, and along the ride is some funny things happen here and there, you know, or some characters are just strange and funny, um, you know, along the way. Very, very, very full circle-ish, yeah. you know? Full circle at the end of the day is about, you know, a guy, uh, uh, full circle is about a guy who gets killed and his friend is aven- avenging his death, you know? But if you watch the movie, it's it's there's a lot of levity to it, yeah. you know. There's a lot of funny things that happen in there, um, in between that. But you know, that that's that's my comfort zone. I think that's I think it's so smart, and it's something that's that's unique to you as well. And um, let's talk about style for a second, because when I watched uh, Stanhope, I watched that before uh, seeing Full Circle, and Stanhope is so full of style. It's such a great short film, such a great looking short film. It's got such a great energy. It's got, um, it's inventive, it's emotional. Just tell me, like, you know, what, what inspired that? Is it, uh, was it a story in particular that inspired the whole thing? Or did you go out to make something that could show uh, the, the best of your talents? Um, so it was a bit of both. Um, that story was directly inspired by a news uh, article, <clears throat> by a story. The, the Stanhope story was directly inspired by something that happened in my neighborhood in Bushwick. It was on the local Channel 12 News right. about a kid who got arrested for killing another kid under his gang leader's orders. And a um, 14 year old. And to me, that was. Like incredible, I was like, well, well, "How the fuck?" I mean, it's tragic, yeah, you know. Yeah. But to me, it was it was big news for me, small news uh, for the world uh, because they didn't even hear about it outside of my own borough, right. let alone outside of the city. So to me, I think I wanted to shed light on that, and I just had a profound curiosity to how a child can turn into an assassin in modern day New York City. Yeah. Right? This isn't like Africa, blood diamond type shit. This is like where like these kids are like on the internet, like playing PlayStation yeah. and going to school and you know have a roof over their heads. So so I was curious to to, to know the semantics behind uh, that, and I wanted to explore a film that could kind of um, give that context um, and um, closure. And so I had that story in mind, and then I just started curating a playlist of music that could help me stylize these scenes um, to conform into that story. So that's how that process happened. So I found my songs, because you know, Stan Hope is really a collage of music, you know, over all of these scenes that conform into the story of how this child became an assassin. And so that was the process. It's a very visual style, actually. And looking at it's Bruno, there's one episode, I think, where you, where they steal Bruno. And there's hardly any dialogue in the whole episode. It's it's just all yeah. told visually, which we don't yeah. really get to do that much in television. I find I felt like no, it's very it's dialogue driven, right? So it was refreshing yeah. for me to watch that and just see how visually driven it is. And I do you, do you think that's something that comes from your music video background? For sure, for sure. Yeah, if, yeah. All my music videos, um, not all of them, but more, but the, the good ones. I would just be telling stories uh, with no dialogue, you know, yeah. and it's all visual, you know, you can all see it. And uh, even in the earlier episodes, the rough episodes of Bruno that I shot, it was a lot of that. It was a lot of like just music over a bunch of visual storytelling, you know, and, I, and, I, and it's funny you mention that because I remember uh, one time 
you know, I must have been high or something. I was, I was smoking and, you know, I was high in the room and, and somebody had, um, um, or maybe it was my wife, or someone had the Bruno playing and, um, it, was, and it was on mute. And I was working and then I kind of drifted off and I looked and it was the episode where um, Br uh, my Bruno's, my arch enemy, um, Harvey, and his little dog, Angie, that are always stealing my spotlight. Um, you know, it's 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 the episode where we go head to head, and then Angie ends up, you know, being this face of this dog food of the, of, of the dog food, and then ends up taking a shit in public, and all these kids are taking yeah. pictures, and he's like, anyway, it was a, it was, I, it was just on mute. I knew exactly. And obviously, in an unbiased way, because I, 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 I know the story. But I wonder, I, I, I wonder why you stuff. know exactly what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, I, was able to, I was able to step out and be like, look, like a kid could see that, you know what I mean, on mute and understand what was happening, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean, yeah. and get the story, you know? Like, it's it's clear in, in that kind of aspect. And um, and I'm sure there's a lot of TV that there's a lot of stuff that, that has that but um, I guess it's just that since that was so compact and short and like you had to you had to really tell so much in a very short period yeah. you get it but I mean um, but yeah all I have to say um, yeah, that's how I, that's how I kind of came up so let's talk a little bit about um I think we've covered some of this in the in part one, um, but let's talk about if you were to take like three of the most defining moments of your career, and it could be a positive, negative, it can be neutral. What would those three be? Do you think? So um, I think the most positive uh, times that I can remember in my career, honestly, are when my film is when my film was playing at a packed. Uh, film festival audience not one seat empty oh, yeah. and the whole fucking house is like cracking up or clapping or like you know yelling or you know you're getting real live reactions yeah. um, in a packed theater to your art yeah. and to me I think there's nothing better than that you know, other than having that same crowd sing your song back to you right, or something like right. that you know what I mean so, so to me that's the equivalent of like of like an artist, you know, having a patch show and everybody singing their song, you know, singing their song, your song back to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Jay Z would do that all the time, and um, and you know, and I'd be in the audience, you know, singing singing his stuff. He doesn't even have to rap some of his songs. Yeah. It's like he has his whole audience sure. do it. That's a real boss move. But but to me, it's like you know, when when your film is, is playing and, and you got a whole you know 500 people or two, two to 200 to 500 people uh you know cracking up or evoking you're evoking some sorts type of emotion out of all out of these hundreds of people you know it's it's it's, it's very rewarding and um you know it just feels you know it feels great it's like a cathartic experience because of all of the bullshit and stress that you went through now you kind of get to let, get to see you know the the fruits you know of your labor. Do you think because that movie live. Full Circle was so difficult to make, but seeing its success was even more rewarding? For sure, yeah. and and I remember also being very pleasantly surprised because in the film festival circuit, one of the festivals that Full Circle was in was called was the Palm Beach International Film Festival, uh -huh. which was basically 80% seniors, senior citizens. Right. Okay. So it's like, <laughs> you know, they're over 60, you yeah. know, so I remember like going there and being like, oh my God, <laughs> like, this is not my audience, you know what I mean? And being like, fuck, you know, like this is going to be horrible, you know? And, um, and, and then here, seeing old white people, you know, laughing. They're like, what do you and, mean? You I know, sit down and pee. What, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> they probably yeah, didn't so, get that gag so well. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, but exactly. some stuff. When I, I say, when I say me, I was talking about them, not myself. Just <laughs> yeah, clarification know, know, for the just, record. There. I, I, I know, but but I think you know when you see that it's 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 this kind of eye opening experience of the universality, the universality of of um, of you know. Filmmaking, yeah. right? Of, of good storytelling, you know. Good storytelling, yeah. right? It it, it kind of transcends, you know, all races, ages, whatever. So, yeah. so I think that was. I'll never forget that. That was great. That was moment. Uh, also, in that very theater, um, my poster, the full circle poster, was right next to uh, Jack and the Giant. 
movie. Right, right. Uh, I forget the, the name of it, but I remember that movie had a budget of $120 million. Yeah, just a little bit and, more you know, than yours. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my $20,000. Yeah, but they didn't work as hard as you, like you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, so I'd say those are the, those are the, the most kind of uh, rewarding, uh, positive experiences. Um, your next question was the, was the negative yeah, ones? Yeah, negative or neutral, like, you know. Yeah, I think the negative ones are, you know, um, working your ass off to get your project made. You're talking about years of work um, that, and they all kind of build up. Years of work build up to a, a potential one day or one moment or one person mm. that could fuck all that mm. up. And just destroy all these years of work. Mm. Everything you've done can it can all be destroyed somehow, some way. Um, and um, that feeling is you know is definitely uh, horrible. It's, it's, it's the worst feeling ever. And um, and sometimes that happens. You know, I mean, knock on wood, hasn't hasn't actually happened to me. It's kind of ha it's happened. It's came very close. Mm. To happening but i mean sometimes that happens that, that that literally happens to people so um i'd say that's the shittiest moment you know um yeah i think those the yeah those are like the most stressful you know shitty moments i'd say uh when you're when your project almost you know just gets tossed yeah just because of a tiny thing or one person yeah, yeah. you know who only came on like a week ago you know or a few or a couple of weeks ago yeah. you've been working on this for years the person who comes in a couple of weeks and just fuck it all up um and sometimes yeah sometimes it's unintentionally and sometimes it's intentionally it's just you, you sometimes you can most of the time you'll never see it coming and that's another fact annoying fact you have to deal with right it's like just some things you just you just can't see them some problems you just can't see coming yeah um I mean, I think you're you're yeah. fortunate in a, in a way that you know, obviously you're you're very smart, you're very likable, um, but you're also very loyal as well. You know, look at all mm -hmm. the projects that you produce yourself, that you direct and write. You use the same people, you know, in front of the camera and presuming behind the camera as well. So I, yeah. I think you have a lot of loyalty from a lot of people that way, and I think that's a good thing to have in this business. As many people yeah. on your side as you can, you know. Yeah. So for you know for the newer uh, filmmakers uh, uh, listening to this, like if you were to start from the beginning again, what if anything would you do differently? You know, it's so funny. Um, I, saw, I saw that question because I actually know I have a very precise answer to that, and I'm very regretful that I didn't do it. Um, and, and I'm glad you just watched Full Circle because mm -hmm. you, you can help weigh in on this. But one major regret that I had that I only found figured out this year mm -hmm. that I wish I did in Full Circle was actually perform, rap the music yeah. in the scene. Yeah. So like, you know, the scene where like, you know, I'm like, the girl calls me, Layla, she's like, oh, Pink and Jamal are on their way, I had to tell them where you live, and I'm like, why'd you do that? And then boom, the door busts open, and next thing you know, I'm running. Like, if I was to be like, boom, I got the call just a bit late, and I'm like rapping as I'm in the action of the scene. Yeah. I've never seen that yeah. before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Play, play into a, a film, and I think just, if I just would have done that for each one of those musical parts, yeah. It would have took the film and put it in a different box, right. you know, a completely, a complete lane of its own, right. and um, and also maybe would, you know, put, you know, maybe would have also highlighted my rap career a little more because people didn't know right. that that was my song in the back. And that's that that's true, the actually. Or yeah, there's nothing to show that it's your song. Yeah. It's, exactly. So, and I had I had that ability, you know. It was a very it could it's a very simple tweak right it wasn't it didn't, yeah. wouldn't, have, wouldn't have really changed much you know in, uh, the, as far as our production um and i think you know so that was one so now but that's motivated me to <clears throat> to, to create a new film where i do do that right. you know and but more of in a wes anderson storytelling kind of style where it's more like i'm telling i'm setting you up or i'm a storyteller right. who's going to tell you about these characters and these stories is this this romeo you know? and juliet thing i've read that you're uh, no no it's not that it's not that um this is something i'm just you know I'm, i haven't even broken i haven't broken right. yet it's something right. that i that i want to that i want to write the romeo and juliet um 
thing is um is is yes i mean that format is similar but it's not like it's not like my story and i'm not the you know i wouldn't be yeah. i'm not acting in that i'm not the lead in that or i'm not you know a, a major character in that you know that i wanted to really focus it's on funny what, what you say it's like it's almost like having you know bradley cooper who can play the guitar brilliantly but never seeing him play the guitar right but it's he's still playing the song so I think you're forgiven in not doing that in your movie because you were doing so much. But you're right. I think it would have made it better. I think it's. I, th- I think you should do that. It would have just, you know, it would have just kind of. It would have, like I said, would have made it its own. You know, it's very. It would have made it a more singular style. Yeah. Where it's like, oh shit, okay, that's different. You know, this kid's rapping now. Well, anybody that knows you would know that you you you're, 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 you write your own songs and you rap. But a lot of people like those people the 60 plus watching the movie probably didn't know that you know so right. it would have added right. a whole new layer to to the movie which right. which is right, right. unique to only a few people that can do that so right you know. yeah so that was my because that that's still what i struggle with to this day right is how to make um content that is so true to just me and like can encapsulate all my talents and just to add, and then I don't have to worry about anybody else. I don't have to worry about nobody else. You know, you know. I think, you know, you can, you can attest to this. It's like, you know, look, we're, we're in a competitive industry, just like any other business, right? It's like, you, we, you, you kind of, kind of keep creating. You, you know, other films or TV will motivate you, right? And be like, oh man, that was better than anything I've done. And I want to do something like that. I want to do better than that. So, you know, you're constantly motivated, but you know, without the right attitude, that can kind of push you down right that can kind of make you feel less than even though you are doing good you're, you're doing great anyway but you know it's just it's like any story right the grass is always greener on the other side even though you have a big yard you know someone's got a bigger yard or whatever but um but if you can find a way that to tell a story where there's no one else you know like no not in a million years could anybody else do this story and tell the story the way you can then you really eliminate all of those kind of you know worries of, 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 of competitors or trying to you know conform to uh, certain styles or to certain you know expectations you know what i mean so so that's something um that i'm you know trying to work on but at the same time right it's um it's dampering because you know you can't ignore the fact that you've i have written i have three scripts I want to, yeah, three, three scripts that uh, that I've been trying to get made, you know, that haven't been, that I haven't been able to get made. And this is going back five years, you know, one of them, the first one's probably I wrote five years ago. So when you look at that track record, right, it's like, it's not very motivating, you know what I'm saying? Like if I, if every single movie I wrote was made, oh, it'd be like, oh, yeah. here we go, I got, let's, let's do this, you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, it's like, let me see a little, so, let me see something first, you know, before, but, let me see something else happen. I think, before. I think it's the same with everybody. I think you're, you know. I was surprised to also learn that people like Scorsese will have like 22 movies he's trying to get made. I read something in an article because Mank just came out uh, last week. The Fincher had 10 movies that he tried to get made that didn't get made, you know. And for, you know, for you and I, we're, um, you know, writing and trying to create our own material. And, you know, you are creating and very successfully. So your own material as well as directing, you know, you just look at these other people. You, you don't get to see the downside. You only get to see the upside mm-hmm. because they yeah. only resurface every two or three years exactly and look yeah Scorsese is a great example because look at his movie Silence yeah he, that, that movie Silence he was trying to get made for something like 10 yeah. years or something so, some, something crazy yeah. he was trying to get that movie made forever yeah. and that's Scorsese and even even uh, the one he just made um, with uh, De Niro and Pacino um, yeah the um Irishman. Irishman, yeah. The Irishman, yeah. That, again, that's another one. It took him forever. Yeah. That's why they had to make him look younger because <laughs> it would have been exactly. easier to make him look well, older, right? You know, exactly. That's why they make him look younger. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's not easy. It's it's not easy to keep creating um, original content, especially features, right? Mm. Especially features, because those those are such a you know an arduous kind of time consuming process. Um, that uh, you know, if you don't see it get made, it's it's you know, 
so it's hard to, to keep making them it's hard to keep writing them um, so words of encouragement for aspiring directors trying to break into the industry what would you what would you say uh, my, I would say it's, it's what I always say it's like keep writing and keep creating um, because something will eventually pop right you can't be you can't have a defeatist mentality whatsoever in this industry it, you know it, it is esoteric it is closed you know it is a closed circle um, but you know both you and I did not have connections in this industry and we made it through and there's a lot of other people who have not many but they have and that's only because of the persistence and the uh, determination and, and also the constant creative of it all right it's always you like you have to have your something of your own to, to break in you know I, I'm, you can attest like there's people that'll be working on set with you that have been working on set for I don't know how many years trying to be a director but but like I said there you know it's it's, it's years they've been doing it because because they've been more focused on trying to work their way up a hierarchy um, in the hopes that you know, the producer of the show or showrunner will say, oh, you know what, it's your turn. You're fine. You put in your work and you are put in your time. It's your turn to direct this episode, which which sometimes happens, but but it's but it's unlikely and, it's, and, it's, and it'll take you forever. Um, you know, unless you're fucking the showrunner, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, you know, but, but uh, you know, it, it, rather than if you go and you try to create something of your own and you go through the process like a like an indie filmmaker, and you 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 you, you, you know you buckle down on your on your pride and put your hubris aside and, and and just try to you know put yourself in the mentality of a kid and trying to make his first film or his first short or feature, and you do something, and now you have your own. Now you have something of your own. You know it's not something you've worked on other people's stuff. Uh, you have something of your own you can show and um, you'll get some type of reaction you'll get some type of guidance that you didn't have before do you think that it's funny I'm getting you know this vibe from you now that it's you, you said something about seeing something that somebody else had made I remember when I was living in London doing music videos I lived in a house with three guys right a photographer a band manager and a web designer and one of them who wanted to be a photographer I remember him looking at this this um Photographer and just saying, I can never take photographs that good. So he just gave up, essentially. Where with me, and it seems like with you, I would look at that and I'd be like, oh my God, that's so inspiring. And even though I wouldn't make that, I would be inspired to create something as good as that and ultimately, hopefully, something that's better than that. Do you think that's something that you share, just that, you know, that fire inside when you see something and that drive oh, yeah. to do something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I can see that from, you know, from knowing yeah, you and also sure. having this conversation. No, I think that's so important. For sure. And it's funny because we, we look at things from such an educated, you know, eye now yeah. um, where it's hard to be submerged into the story so it's rare right where a film can submerge you so deep where you kind of lose your 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 your, your trained eye and, and and start just and forget about everything and you know you're just engulfed in the story because most of the times we watch things and we're like ah they shouldn't have done that or i would have done this <laughs> you know i, I would have tied this in or held on that shot a little longer or that, that whole scene yeah he missed the they missed this one small opportunity to make that whole scene work all he had to do was do this you know so I, we see that stuff or you know i think we'll see a film that you know was great but could have been done a little better uh-huh. you know what i mean or you know and we'll see like okay that's super inspiring because i know that um i could i can do something like that but like you said even better uh-huh. you know or because it's now you're putting your flair your original you know singular vision on something that m- might have been done before but that's like that's like all the film right and tv right it's like there's only a few stories that are told but they're all executed differently told with different points of views and all of that stuff so i think um yeah i'm always inspired uh well i wouldn't say always it's, it's rare it's it's i mean it's great when it happens but it's but it's rare when it happens but when it happens it's like it's a great feeling right because you're like hype and you're like, Ooh, like funny, yeah. i saw something that yeah i saw something that's motivating and uh, you know i want to go right you know i want to go 
make something better, you know. Yeah. And what's uh, what's next for you now? Do you do you know now? You... I'm supposed to go. I'm supposed to leave yesterday um, and shoot this uh, show for CBS called Equalizer, which has my um, hip hop um, film counterparts in there. Got Queen Latifah and Shaquem and a few guys I'm working with on the musical. I was gonna go do that um, in November, December, but now somebody got somebody caught COVID, and now that that's all getting pushed, and, and what sucks is that. Um, it's it, it was gonna be a back-to-back -back thing. I was gonna go to Atlanta right right after that, like literally right after that, and shoot this new series for stars um, called BMF, the, the Black Mafia Family Show. And now with 50, um, because they were fifty yeah. with the uh, fifty show. And now because um, and Anil and and yeah. uh, and, and uh, our boy Tim, Timothy yeah, Burton, Tim Burton yeah. the I, yeah, I know, yeah, I know yeah, all the people yeah. on that show. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, I, so now I don't know. I don't think that's gonna work out anymore now. You know because um, they they are BMF already gave Equalizer like it started as one day, then they gave them three right, days right. into my prep, and now it's like you know. So but yeah, so I'm gonna do that, and then um, and then we'll see. You know, there's a few features that I'm attached to that you never know when it'll go. You know, um, but you know, I take it as a you gotta find the. Uh, the blessing in, 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 in the pain, right, or in, in the hard times, and that's, you know, being able to spend more time, you know, with the family, and, you know, I got this baby yeah. um, that I'm able to see, you know, grow, uh, hit these milestones, you know, so I think that's, that's you, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't put a price on that, so I'm happy about that. And then, you know, just being able to kind of sit back and just more read more and develop more, you know, yeah. I think it's, it's always a kind of um, you know an opportunity so yeah, but yeah smart. and uh, can yep. people find you on social yep yep you can find me on social um, slick underscore naeem or just just google slick naeem um, you should find all my all my handles over there nice well I, I know you've, you've got YouTube and you're on Instagram I know and fake well yep just leave it at that. You don't want people hitting you yeah, up on yeah. Facebook that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my story of my life. You know? so, and, and, you know, everybody's got a movie, too, or a series. And that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, you know, we all have our... We still have stuff we're trying to get made. So um, not to discourage you, not to discourage all the people that hit up all these other people to help get their stories made. Sometimes that happens. I know that's how the fucking Central Park Five happened. But, um, you know, just know that whoever you're reaching out to... Yeah, I guarantee you they also have their own projects that they're trying to get made too, so have patience. Yeah, it's been amazing having you on the show. Thank you so much. You're inspiring. You. You're just a, a real treat to chat to. So a man of many Thank talents you. and a fantastic filmmaker and director. Thank you so much. It's Thank like you. Thank you. Well, the feeling's mutual. I was glad we could do this. And that's the show. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can find me at jefftthomas.com or at jefftthomas on Twitter and Instagram. Remember 19 Media.